the Glen of Aherlow, also known as Lafferty's, and like every good Irish tune, it has a rake of different names. The best information that I have is that it was written by the great Sean Ryan, famous tin whistle player who I believe has the longest running Irish music session in the world. It happens in the Crane here in Galway every Sunday and to my shame I've never been there. <laughs> but I know Sean for a long time. He's an absolute sweetheart, an amazing uh, musician of course and a brilliant composer of tunes. One of my favourites of his is the Coast of Austria as much for the title as for the tune itself. The version of this tune that I know the best is from a fantastic album called Almost Joe Cooley, which means in honour of Joe Cooley, and it's by Paul Rock and Frankie Gavin, and they call it Lafferty's, uh, which is how I know the tune. But uh, from the little bit of uh, research I've done online, it, it seems that the Glen of Aherlow is the tune name as uh, written by Sean Rock. So it's a real, it's two parts. It's in the key of E minor. There are some interesting picking issues that crop up in this tune because of the way that the melody crosses the strings and so we have a lot of, uh, I suppose, outside picking in that the alternate picking crossing over the strings we're going outside on both, uh, down and up. And so that, uh, that creates just a little bit of extra effort and we'll talk about that a little later in detail. new to my channel what I like to do is take a tune learn it in its most simple format and then add lots of ornamentation but do it in an incremental way so we're going to start with simple uh, triplets and trebles add in some variation try if the tune uh, allows for it to use some chords and harmony and then we'll always have a couple of rounds of the tune where anything goes and it's kind of a culmination of all the other techniques that we learn put together and this is a way of creating a, a tune that tells a story or a tune that has, you start to develop your own style by picking and choosing triplets or trebles or slides and hammer-ons and all the fun stuff, slotting it into the tune the way that it appeals to your ear. My job uh, is to give you all of the ideas and all of the various technique, techniques that you can use and then you choose which ones you like. Let's talk about the picking. So here is the issue. When you get to this phrase, right, we're starting on a downbeat, of course, and that's a downstroke. And it's a long note at the start, which means that our second stroke is also a downstroke because we are doing alternate picking, down, up, down, up, down, up, on the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if we have a one, two, and it's a down, then the three is also a down. Hope that makes sense. So we're going to play a down on the B, then a down on the A. Now we're going down and our next note is an F-sharp which is directionally up. And it's, it's, so we have a string change that's happening. So the A, this um, A, A, the A note is going down away from us and then we have to come all the way up to catch the up note on the F. And then our next one is on a down and it's another string change and then another one, and then another one, and then another one, right? So there's, that might feel a little bit strange when you go to do it. And in essence, it's, it's not the most economic way to pick it. It's the way that I always pick. And so I'm an alternate picker. You could absolutely make the argument for picking this one backwards, right? I'm gonna to try to do it uh, and I'll probably get it wrong. So you would do an up on that A. So pick a down as you normally would. And instead of doing a down stroke on the downbeat, <clears throat> you could play an up stroke on that downbeat. 
And what that means then is that your pick is moving in the direction of the string change. That is going to be more efficient. And you can still correct your picking direction when you get to the E and do a triplet on it. So just slow it down, that looks like this, right? And you can see, even by the amount that my pick needs to move, that by doing it in what we would call economy picking, which is not following the strict down, up, down, up, that phrase probably picks a little bit easier. Now, if you're still in the process of establishing a good regulated picking pattern where you want to be down, up, down all of the time and uh, not have a randomized approach to picking when you don't actually know whether it's going up or down, then I highly recommend sticking with alternate picking. And truly, up to speeds of 120, 130 BPM, which is outrageously fast in Irish music. There, isn't, there, there really isn't going to be an issue with picking it with the alternate up and down. But it might feel a little strange, and the reason that it feels strange or strained is that you're, you're, you're changing strings and you're picking directions are going in the opposite direction. So there's a little bit more like physical work required to get around. So that is definitely an argument for the economy picking. It's alien to me, but it's something that I've started to work on because um, there are phrases in tunes and I always wondered why a tune like this tune feels a little bit funny under my right hand. And my understanding now is that the alternate picking of down, up, down, up, down, up may actually have its own limitations in terms of comfort and definitely in terms of speed. If we were trying to hit 160 or 170 BPM in this, I would end up in this what they call a bouncing motion, which because I'm doing a down and then changing string direction on the up, that I'm essentially bouncing over the strings. And you can see it in the way that my hand is moving. All right, and so bouncing pick motion is the, is the least efficient, and it's actually the most troublesome and bothersome. But again, the argument within Irish music is that there's very rare occasions that you're gonna get up to such a high speed that it's gonna cause problems. But saying that, if that bounce is very pronounced in your playing, even at lower speeds, that can cause some problems. So there's a little bit of a quandary here in this tune. I'm not gonna say you should definitely do it one way or the other. What I've always said around picking is that it's really important to establish a picking pattern that you're in control of. So I'm in complete control of down, up, down, up, down, up, and I know when I move away from it and I can get back to it. The issues that I've always seen in banjo playing is that coming across a player who doesn't know when they're doing a downstroke or an upstroke and that the right hand is moving with great irregularity. And that's where the tension comes in and it's where the missed notes and the missed triplets are really uh, exemplified. If you're very comfortable that you're in a constant down, up, down, up motion, then you're in a brilliant position to experiment with economy picking, which is picking in the direction that the pick is moving across string changes. This really only becomes an, an issue when, when you're talking about string, string changing, because on a single string, you can do whatever you like. It's not going to become an issue. String, string change and picking direction are intertwined. And it's an interesting one for me, as I said. Often wondered why tunes like this feel a little clunkier under my right hand, and, and now I understand why. So that little bit of an explainer in relation to pick direction. Um, we can get into the whole downward stroke escape and upstroke escape and all that kind of stuff. That's a kind of a much broader conversation, which I am working on uh, some videos for that. So keep an eye on the channel. If you're interested in applying some of the pick directional techniques to banjo, which I don't believe has been really expounded on uh, too much uh, so far. So I'm learning as I go. I've always been a uh, great advocate <laughs> for escaping uh, difficulties by doing something different. Um, and I, I started doing this, <laughs> maybe this isn't a great example, definitely started to avoid using my little finger for the high B when I was about 11 because it was just too much work. And so I learned how to slide. And, and of course I developed 
techniques that turned out to be beneficial in the long run, like sliding and uh, being able to move hand position. But the downside was that I never really developed my pinky as strong as my other finger. So, but there are alternatives to getting stuck in the alternate picking and the outside picking that can crop up in a tune like this. And it's simply to just change the tune ever so slightly. And it just moves the emphasis away from the daga 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 of that outside down up down up down up where you're crossing strings and you just put a tiny variation in. So here's the bars that we're talking about. Those ones. So one very simple way to do that is just to uh, make the first note a little longer. So you're essentially putting in a small, I don't know what you would call that in fiddle terms, or maybe that's a roll or a cut. And you're just, you're removing the down up, down up. And this is the, the, the second one. So again, there's the down up, down up that's happening on the string change. You can just do a little run up. So there's always ways of coming around it. And Irish music is flexible enough that that is still completely within the nuance and within the, uh, the, the notes of the tune itself. Uh, but it might be a way, if that cross string, uh, the string change picking is annoying you, just put in a triplet. Or a long note. Lots of ways around it, so experiment with that. Let's try a version using three note triplets. So these are the little run-ups. The reason that I like these, and again, you know, I talk about this in almost every video, is that we're trying to get away from that really metronomic machine gun kind of rat-a-tat banjo playing. And to bring in more legato and more rhythm and more flow. One of the ways that always works really well for me are three note triplets that run up and run down into uh, the corners of the tunes, if you will. So here's an example of that. I have three versions of the tune, play along versions at 60 BPM, 80 BPM and 100 BPM with Bauron and guitar backing for you to play along with. So go learn the tune, 
get the simple notes under your fingers, add in some ornamentation, then jump in at 60 BPM. That's essentially like slow spe session speed, right? Get comfortable at that and then go for it at 80. And it doesn't really make any difference if you miss notes and stuff. This is about forcing your body to adapt. And so by playing at 80 BPM when you're not 100% comfortable with it, once you know the tune and you have good technique and you have all of the other stuff down that I talk about in terms of hand position and just overall relaxation and flow, push your body to play at 80 BPM. It will adapt. And if you're able for it, go for 100. And that's essentially session speed, 100 BPM and above. But you will only get there by having everything, the whole package is in place and then going for it. Just jump in at those speeds, force your right hand, force your body to adapt. It will do it. And it's a lot of fun. Thank you.